Good morning. Welcome to Camarillo United Methodist Church. We're glad to be joining together in worship this morning. It's a, it's a, it's been a great week. It's been a, it's a beautiful day. It's kind of warm, but it's all, it's all, it's even better when we gather together and and come together as a community of faith. So uh, as we begin, as always, just want to remind you to fill out the back portion of your uh, bulletin, which is the connection card portion. Even if you're a regular tender, just write your name and tear that portion off and have it ready to turn in with your offering. Uh, Greatly appreciate it. And if you're new to our church, we extend a special welcome to you and hope you enjoy worshiping with us this morning. And we invite you, if you do not have a regular place of worship, to consider making Camarillo UMC your, your church home. And if you have any questions about the ministries and the various uh, ch- uh, program, program offerings, uh, just inquire the, the office as well as any of the members. And if you can uh, fill out that portion, uh, letting us know that you're joining us in worship, we would greatly appreciate that. And for those of you who are joining us online, we invite you to go to our church website and uh, fill out the online connection card, letting us know that you're joining us in worship this morning, as well as download the worship bulletin so you can follow along in the service. A couple of announcements before we get going uh, that I want to share with you. This Friday, we have a, what do we have? Campfire night, all church uh, campfire, CMC campfire night. Uh, it's this Friday, the 16th at 7 p.m. We'll be out in, I, I believe, Friendship Garden. Uh, we'll have s'mores, we'll have campfire songs. It's a great way to kind of wind down the summer season. And even though it seems to be getting hotter and hotter, uh, school's ready to begin for a lot of the kids. So technically, you know, if you run off the academic cal- calendar, summer is coming to an end. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. All I know is it's kind of hot, though, still. Um, speaking of schools uh, starting up again, next week we have our um, uh, Blessing of the Backpacks Sunday. So, so as our uh, children and our youth uh, and our young adults uh, start, start up and going back to school, uh, we invite all of them to bring their backpacks to church next Sunday so that we can have a special blessing and a special prayer so that this can truly be a wonderful and successful year for all of our students. And so again, uh, just a reminder for all of our children and our youth to uh, bring their backpacks. And I, and I, I say children and youth, but uh, in previous years, we also had teachers bring their backpacks. And uh, if you carry a backpack or a briefcase with you, you can bring that too. And we'll bless anything. So uh, it's just a way of us uh, re- uh, reminding ourselves that as we go through our lives, we go through our weeks, go through our days, uh, that God is with us, uh, walking with us through each and every um, whatever that we, that, that we face each day. So uh, that's next week. We also have a new youth group forming in a couple of weeks for students uh, entering fourth and fifth graders. This is our preteen youth group. Uh, so this is a new group that we'll be meeting on uh, Sunday evening, starting from the 25th and the 15th. The dates are all there. Um, okay, so but it, basically, we have our normal youth group on Sunday evenings uh, for middle school and high school students. But this is for the pre-teenagers. Uh, we actually have a pretty large fourth and fifth grader group. This is a pre-teen group, uh, and it's, uh, we're really excited about that. So Ms. Dory will be leading the, the, the pre-teen group. We, I, I think they're going to be coming up with a name um, for their group. And then Ms. Christie will be taking care of the youth group. There will be joint activities as well as uh, uh, separating to do their uh, different lessons. Um, together and ind- uh, independently. So we're very excited about that. And then last but not least, so we're very supportive of our students here at this church. Uh, last but not least, our endowment uh, committee uh, is re- they're getting ready to disperse funds, uh, scholarships to all of our college and graduate students, uh, our members who are members of the church. Um, the application deadline is August 31st, and so if you, um, you know, for our, our young, uh, college and graduate students, I, I hesitate to say young adults because I had a, when I was in seminary, I actually had a classmate that was 92, and she was going for her Master of Divinity degree. So, yeah. Um, so uh, if you, if you, if you want to be one of them, uh, can apply for the scholarship, and so uh, just make sure that the, a- the applications w- are available in the church office as well as it will be available on the website. With that, I'm going to invite you to stand as you're able.
Turn your attention to our liturgist, Carolyn Sawyers, as she leads us in the call to worship. Give to the Lord your whole trust. Know that God has always and will always be with you. Worship God in confidence and peace. Please join in singing our opening hymn, We Walk by Faith. The words will be on the screens. It can also be found on page 2196 of our Faith We Sing songbook. Good morning. Oh, good morning. It's so good to see all of you here today. We had a very busy crescendo week. And today, before you sing, I want to, well, I want to do a math lesson. And I want to talk a little bit about the theme of crescendo, which was friends around the world, right? So, um, I'm also going to share a book with you in Sunday School about friends. And the title is, um, oh no, wait, let me check. Oh, here it is. Oh yeah, I remember now. Enemy Pie. We are going to talk about Enemy Pie in Sunday School. Um, and in Enemy Pie, um, Billy Ross is a new kid to the neighborhood. And um, Derek isn't quite very happy that Billy Ross has moved in. And Billy Ross quickly becomes Derek's number one enemy. You know what? Billy Ross started laughing when Derek struck out at baseball. And Billy Ross had a birthday party and invited everyone on the block to have a birthday party on his huge trampoline but he didn't invite 
Derek. But don't worry, guys, because Derek's dad had a recipe for enemy pie, and it is sure to get rid of any enemy for good. So we'll read that in Sunday school, but we got to move on to our math lesson right now. Did I mention it's a high school math lesson? Geometry, geometry. But you know what? I think Mrs. Benny's out here somewhere, and she's been teaching geometry for 100 years at Rio Mesa. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, maybe not quite 100 years. She'll help us if we need help. But um, I'm going to tell you about someone who is almost 100 years old. His name is Reverend Lee Truman. He and his wife, Dr. Ruth, are members of this church. And they have been sharing God's love for pretty much 100 years. And they were my sponsors when I joined this church about 30 years ago. Okay, back to geometry. Here is my first geometry question for you. If I were to draw three lines to connect those dots, what shape would I have? Triangle. Triangle. Okay, good. And thank you for those of you who raised your hands first. That's awesome. But you can shout out the answer if you want. Now, what about this one here? Another triangle? You know what? Yes? You know what? You are right. Now, if I could take those two triangles, and we had the time to cut them out, and then I kind of smooshed them together so they're kind of overlapping, there are two triangles kind of overlapping. There's one at the top with the point up at the top, and one upside down with a point at the bottom. And you know what? It is the Jewish star, the star of David in the Jewish faith. Now, I want you to look closely at that and tell me if you see yourself in there anywhere. You know what? The star of David has lots of meanings. Uh, one of its meanings is that it's a symbol of harmony and peace. But Here's the thing, okay, I don't think anyone's ever going to look at a triangle the same again after I tell you the secret that Reverend Truman told me. He said that very top dot at the top is God with his arms stretching down the two sides, sending love to everyone on the earth, even the Billy Rosses. God is sending love down. And do you know where you are? All of you are that little very bottom point of the, the other star, the upside down one, this one. You are this dot with arms stretching up back to God as a prayer from the earth back to God and praising God and thanking God. Now, before we sing our song, some of the words of that song that you're going to be singing and signing are, I need your help on this one. I'm going to start it, and then you have to fill in the words. Anything is possible with, say it really loud. What about this one? Really loud. This one. This one. And this one. You got it. I'm going to add one sentence to that song. You don't have to sign it that way. Anything is also possible with Emmanuel. Emmanuel means, this is the sign language for God, God within all of us, even the Billy Rosses. Anything is possible, even turning an enemy into a friend. Now, you are our closing prayer. We are going to do the crescendo theme song as our praising God. And then we're going to do our hands around the world as our thank you prayer to God. So all of you dots, our stars, let's come to the front of the sanctuary. Even if you weren't in crescendo and you want to join in, you can come right up here and 
we'll do the motions together. We're going to start with our crescendo song. And now we're going to move in our, uh, into our other theme song for this year, and this is Hands Around the World. Hands around the world, holding hands around the world, anything is possible with Hands around the world, friends around the world, making friends around the world. Anything is possible with friends around the world. We are part of a rainbow bridge of every child in every land. Coloring our dreams with hope and Hearts around the world, joining hearts around the world. Anything is possible with hearts around the world. Love around the world, sharing love around. And to that, we all together, after this beautiful prayer, together say, Amen. Amen. It's so great to have our children and uh, to have such programs such as our um, Crescendo Music Camp. It's, we started that, what, four years ago and three years ago? Four years ago. I think this is, this is our fourth year doing it. And it's just grown. Um, in fact, we all, you all know that when we opened registration last March for this this, for this uh, year's crescendo, uh, it filled within three days. And so ever since then, uh, the church, the leadership, uh, the staff have been brainstorming how to expand our crescendo uh, music program. And what you, um, we shared it with the uh, crescendo group uh, yesterday, but uh, we are, we're getting ready to launch a, a music academy at our church, an expansion of our crescendo music program. And so it's going to be something that's going to be happening all year long, not just 
once a week. So we'll still have the once a week during the summer, but we're going to have music classes uh, throughout the year. Something for our church to actually be known for throughout Camarillo and this whole area is uh, we, we envision our church being a hub for all music teachers, education, growth. If you think about it, back in the days of you know, Bach and Beethoven and the classical musicians, as well as John Wesley, music uh, uh, to church was a place where music was taught. So we're kind of going back to that, those roots. So we give thanks to God. And so uh, as we continue in our worship service, we, are, we come to a time in which we lift up prayer. And so I invite us to be in that attitude of prayer. Let us bow our heads. O God of love and of mercy, we give you thanks, O God, for what a joyous week we've had this week. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the fabulous week of engaging with our children throughout our community through the Crescendo Music Camp. We give you thanks for the the fun and the interactions we were able to have in connecting with our children and sharing in your gift of music. We pray that the relationships we built may continue to build for years to come. We give you thanks, O oh God, for gathering us this day and every, and every week. As we come together before you in worship, we realize the importance of, of leaning upon you for guidance and strength for our lives, which sustains us throughout, through each week. Lord, we come seeking your wisdom for guidance in life, for strength in dealing with with challenges and sorrow, and peace in times of unrest. Lord, we lift up to you prayers, prayers for those within our congregation and our families in need of extra prayer. We pray for your healing hands to be upon Evelyn Williams as she now recovers at home for after a couple weeks in the hospital. Lord, may her body be restored anew and have her regain her strength to be back on her feet, being our visitation and our care minister to, to, to connect and to care for others. But we pray for, for her full and complete recovery now, God. We also lift up prayers for Nadine Wilhight as she seeks recovery from uh, hip surgery and pneumonia following a fall. Lord, surround her with medical professionals who can help her recover fully. May your healing presence embrace her and the family, O oh God. We also lift up continual prayers for healing for Valerie Tho as she continues in her cancer treatment. Grant her strength to endure through the process. We also lift up prayers for Frank Roth and his recovery. Give him encouragement and hope to overcome all his challenges at this time. Be with Pat and the family and trusting in your healing hands. And we lift up prayers for Dave Peterson as he uh, has just suffered a heart attack. Lord, we pray for your healing presence and your healing hands to embrace him and to work through the doctors and the nurses and providing the best care to, in which he needs. Lord, there are many other prayers that we hold in our hearts. Receive them. Receive our prayers as, as we lift them up to you in silence at this time. O oh God of mercy, May your spirit be the source of our strength, our hope, and our joy. We pray that in the midst of life's challenges, may your presence provide that sense of peace and direction. Give us strength always to continue to, to be, continue the work of building your kingdom. May we extend your love to others. Give generously of your blessings and share in your abundance. May we experience from you the true riches of life and work towards building your kingdom here on earth. 
We pray all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We are always grateful for all the blessings, many blessings that God bestows upon us, especially all the programs that that continues to feed us as well as reach out to the community and provide for the needs in our community. And so at this time, we uh, take this time to give of our tithes, gifts, and our offering, that our resources may be used to continue the ministries uh, in the church and outside the walls of the church to serve the world around us.
please join in praying together the prayer of dedication shown on the screens. Generous God, you have blessed us throughout our lives. Take these offerings and every gift we give and use them to show others the breadth of your unfailing love. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 to 13. Listen to the writer's admonition to persevere in the Christian faith. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and yet you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as children. My child, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when you are punished by him, for the Lord disciplines those who he, whom he loves and chastises every child whom he accepts. Endure trials for the sake of discipline. God is treating you as children, for what child is there whom a parent does not discipline? If you do not have that discipline in which all children share, then you are illegitimate and not his children. Moreover, we had human parents to discipline us, and we respected them. Should we not be even more willing to be subject to the Father of Spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as he seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good in order that we may share his holiness. Now discipline always seems painful rather than pleasant at the time, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore lift your drooping hands and strength your weak needs and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. May the Lord bless this reading and hearing of the Holy Scripture. Amen. Most gracious, loving God, we give you thanks as we come together at this time and to reflect upon the passage that we have just heard, but also to just reflect upon the celebrations of this day, and to also be able to just bask in your presence as we come here. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit be upon us, fill this place in which we gather here at church as well as uh, in the various places across the internet in which we join together in worship. May your Holy Spirit open up our ears, our hearts, and our minds that we may be receptive to what you have to say. And we ask that the meditations of all of our hearts and the words of our mouths be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. In Christ's most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. So there's a story about a young man who decided that he wanted to uh, uh, pick up one of the sports, and he decided that he, he'll, you know, try out boxing. So he decided to uh, take some private lessons. He went to his, uh, the local uh, nearby gym, and he found a boxing coach who agreed to give him 26 weekly lessons, 26 weekly sessions. As part of his instructions, the young man was required to uh, not just learn about the techniques, but to spar with the other boxers at that gym. Well, after the first session, this young man was very sore and swollen, and he didn't realize how difficult it would be. So this battered young man goes up to the coach uh, with some questions. He asks, so... Did you say that there were 26 of these sessions of this course? And the teacher said, that's right. And the young man wanted to clarify, and the rest of the classes are going to be like today? And the coach said, that's right. And then the young man scratched his head and asked, well, sir, uh, I was wondering, would it be possible if I took the other 25 uh, lessons by correspondence? That would be nice, right? 
<laughs> well, we all know that there are some things in life that you can't learn through correspondence or distance learning. You know, imagine, imagine uh, our Olympic athletes training via Zoom. I'm sure some of them have to do that during COVID, but uh, this year, everything coming back together. Well, anyhow, there are things in life that require putting in the hard work, hanging in there and learning your lessons the hard way. Well, as we come to the third part of our uh, sermon series uh, based on the Olympics uh, that's happening, uh, Olympic uh, Games that's happening or happened in Paris. Now, Paris is, what, nine hours ahead of us? So I think that they've already had their closing ceremony, right? I think it's done. So happened, but for us, it's still happening, right? I don't know. Um, uh, so... It's, as part of that, you know, we're reminded of all the hard work that all of these athletes um, had to devote, that they must have devoted uh, to be part of these games. Many of them have been training for years, if not from childhood. They devoted, you know, 10 to 14 hours a day, you know, six to seven uh, days a week or five to six days a week in practice to give it their all for the chance to be able to compete in the Olympics. And over the past couple of weeks, you know, we've seen highlights of these stories of the thrills of victories of those who have won their gold or other medals. But in the midst of these, in, in, any competition, you will also have thousands, thousands of other competitors who will never step foot on a podium. And for some of them, there is that agony of defeat if they were hopeful for a medal. Now, I have to admit that when I had first planned on doing the series, I was hoping to, to watch every match and, you know, uh, you know every, every match of the Olympics, you know, take notes so that I can give you uh, all these updates on all the games and, and, you know, take close notes of, the, of the, all the inspiring stories of victories as well as the heartbreaking moments of defeat. I was hoping to do all that. But as many of you know, Something else has been going on in my life. So to my defeat, you know, I've been a bit preoccupied these past couple of weeks, you know, from moving, which I've moved about, I would say I've moved about 40 times in my lifetime. That's a lot, I know, but that's the life of a pastor. Um, but this has to be probably the hardest of them all because I've never had to move into a house that was not ready. So living, how, how many of you guys have lived in houses that's under renovation. So you guys can commiserate with me, right? Anyhow, so, so you know, between that and having to attend, you know, being at a conference and, and then flying over to help my son buy a car, all of that, I, I, I wished, I had wished that I had more time to just sit in front of the TV and enjoy the games. But unfortunately, I, had, I, I didn't get to do that. Much like, I guess, in the back, I remember the days when I was younger, much younger, could do that. And I, as I speak about when, you know, much younger years, I remember one of the most thrilling victories that I watched in the Olympics. It was back in 1980. You guys remember back in 1980? Remember those days? Okay, some of you can't. Yeah. You know, Owen's over there going, what? <laughs> or Oliver. Oliver's there. <laughs> um, but 1980s, I remember uh, watching the, uh, the hockey competition at the 1980 Winter Olympics. Even, I was just shy of being 10 years old at the time. But I remember the thrill of watching our United States hockey team win the gold medal, which was an incredible feat. The years leading up to the Olympics were a time of great uncertainty if you remember, back in the 80s. You guys remember the 80s? I mean, okay, so you remember all the disco and the crazy hairdo and stuff like that. But there were other things happening in the world, right? Right around 1980, right? Even though as an elementary student, I, I remember watching the news every evening. You guys remember watching the news in 19, on, you know, late 70s, early, or 80, 1980? Um, CBS News, who was the anchor? Walter Cronkite. And he would always start or end with the, you know, uh, keeping us posted on the state 
of affairs that was happening in Iran, right? The hostage, the American hostage crisis in Iran. There were images of them blindfolded while others around the world were burning American flags, protesting for whatever you know, we stood for. Remember that? Remember those days? The oil crisis, because of that whole Iran situation, the oil, there was an oil crisis in the Middle East which drove the, the gas prices where there were long lines at the gas stations. Remember that? Okay, now, now you guys remember it. <laughs> Waiting at the gas lines, I guess. Okay. Um, my dad was a taxi driver in Hawaii, which meant that he, had to, he struggled to fill up his you know, oversized you know, Cadillac DeVille in that gas line. I remember that. I didn't drive, but I remember my dad struggling with that. And the interest rates, and I believe the interest rates were up like 13, 14%. 15%? 18%! And I'm complaining about my 7% right now, right? It kind of pales to back in those days. And of course, there were the threats nuclear war, you know, it was on the mind of everyone because of the Cold War. You know, I remember having drills at school. But in the midst of the, all of that, in the midst of that uncertainty, the world was coming together. In February of 1980 to Lake Placid, New York, right, for the Winter Olympics. Remember back, back then, the Winter and Summer Olympics was actually in the same year. They changed that back in the, uh, in the 90s. But in 1980, in February of 1980, the games were happening at Lake Placid, New York for the Winter Olympics. And the game that I mentioned happened to be the one that is coined Miracle on Ice. How many of you guys are familiar with that? All right, some of you. Okay. Well, you might remember that back then, the Soviet Union, yes, we had the Soviet Union back then, the Soviet Union had dominated the sport of hockey for over 20 years. Right? They had taken the gold medal for the past four out of the five previous Olympics. And they were coming into the games as, of course, the dominant team to win it again, easily. They were seasoned... Hello? Oh, okay. There were seasoned players who had been on that team for, for a decade compared to the American team. The United States, on the other hand, was a group of young college students who had just been pulled together just a year prior to the Olympics. It was one of those where the, Olymp the, the United States Olympic Committee kind of almost gave up on the sport. But last minute, a year before they pulled the team together, the U.S. had no real intention of winning the game. After all, they were young. The average age was only like 21. It was the youngest team ever. Well, and uh, while the Soviets had dominated the sport for so long. But the coach, Herb Brooks, trained the players, our players, to be aggressive and not be intimidated by the other team, especially the Soviet Union. And as the game got going, as the game got going between the Soviets and the United States, the Soviets attacked the Americans, overpowering them, skating circles around the young team players. The ratio of shots to go, or, or shots taken towards the goal, by the Soviets was 12 to 2 compared to the Americans. They beat down on the Americans, but amazingly, at halftime, the score was only 3 to 2. And in the second half, one of the Soviets was put into the penalty box, allowing the, the U.S. team to have a, a, a one-man advantage. And they did their best to get a pl a, a puck, the puck into the net. But the Soviets were very, just too good. But in the last seconds of the power play, Mark Johnson, shots wide, that slid underneath the goalie, tying the game, 3-3. Three to three. And then just a, a few plays later, the puck was passed to the U.S. team captain, Mike Zioni, who had, was left undefended, and he fired the shot. He gave the U.S. team the lead for the first time, 4-3. to three. But there were still 10 minutes left in that game. 
You guys remember this? Who saw the game? Some of you. You guys still remember it? It was an amazing game. Some people said that was the longest 10 minutes of their life. Right? Because then for the next 10 minutes, the Soviets did all they could to fire back at the U.S. But rather than go on defense, the U.S. team actually played offense, confusing the Soviets. And the U.S. team shut out the, so- the Soviets in the second half to win the gold medal. Everyone was excited. That was the thrill of victory, right? Here's this, they, they just ran. Right? When the game was over, they, nobody could believe it. They called it the miracle on ice. The team players all ran um, onto, the, onto the ice. But the coach, Herb Brooks, he didn't know what to do. So he ran back to the locker room and he just cried. That was the thrill of victory for him. Again, the game was known as the miracle on ice. It's called a miracle because no one expected, no one expected the young U.S. team to win against the dominant, the dominant Soviets. In fact, most people had written off the competition and, and questioned any effort to even try to match up you know, to, the, to the dominant team. It would have been easy for the players to, to also just kind of buy into that idea that ah, they're not good enough, to not put in any effort at all. It's so much easier to give up than to persist and to hope for an outcome that's almost impossible to imagine, isn't it? Do we find ourselves like, like that sometimes? Do we find ourselves as part of a group that's, that's toiling over the agony of defeat rather than dreaming of the thrill of victory. Maybe like the naysayers of that U.S. team, you know, we bought into the idea that miracles are impossible. Maybe we're just tired from the constant disappointments in life, the constant fighting in our relationships, the, the burden of trying to balance a checkbook that, that keeps heading towards zero, you know, the, the constant bombardment of polarized political agenda, you know, propaganda around us. Isn't it, it's, it's just, it's easy to just give in, isn't it? But the writer of Hebrews reminds us that in our passage today that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. In other words, we are not alone in the struggles and the battles of life. Being part of a church, being part of a faith community, means that we are in this together, this thing called life. We pray for one another, we hold each other up, and we journey together. We are a team. And the writer continues, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so cl- too closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who, for the sake of the joy set before him, endured the cross. If we need any example of one who had any reason to, to quit running a good race, it would be Jesus, Right? After calling the disciples, teaching the multitude about the, about the wonderful kingdom of God, a new way of li- living, a new way of thinking, healing, healing people who, who were, who were um, uh, oppressed and who have been struggling and suffering with illnesses for so long. Like that woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years. He went around healing all these people from their illnesses, giving hope to the hopeless, and even feeding you know, the masses, you know, like free dinner or free lunch every time, wherever you turn. Yes, the people all gathered around Jesus. But when the religious leaders and the Roman soldiers came to arrest Jesus, what happened to every one of them? And even his disciples ran away. The closest of Jesus' followers hid out, only looking you know, from afar what was happening. The rest of the people rejected him. Instead, the people called for his crucifixion. And yet, Jesus still showed the people 
what God's love and forgiveness, forgiveness looks like when the first words out of his mouth on the cross were, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You see, Jesus, when Jesus came to us to teach us about God's love and to show us what the kingdom of God could look like, it's not some passive statement that we believe in a God of love and, or, and that, that we, sh we, sh we, should, yeah, we should love God too. It's not this passive statement, but it's something that we are called to do. The difference between celebrating the thrill of victory and dealing with the agonies of defeat is the choice that we make at, each, at any given moment. It's the choice that we make when faced with the obstacles and the challenges before us. To love God means to choose each day to live a life that loves despite what we deal with each day. You see, when, when we choose to love God, then even when we can't make sense of the world around us, we choose to trust in God's presence in the midst of the chaos rather than blame God as to say, you know, you know, as if we know better than the ultimate creator, right? The reason why people blame God is because they think that they know what's better and that God's not doing a good job, right? What we choo choosing to love God means to choosing to trust. When we choose to love our neighbors, then we look for ways that we can serve others above our own self-interest. We make an active choice to consider how my actions affect others rather than complain how, how we are play, you know, put in a situation because of whatever others may have done or if others are in a better place than we are. To run the race means to make a deliberate choice at any given moment to do good, to love God, to love our neighbors. So when Jesus speaks of loving God and loving our neighbors as the greatest of the commandments, he's calling us to choose to live in a way that is not deterred by the trials and tribulations, but to strive for victory at any moment. And that victory comes when we live in such a way that builds each other up, which then builds us up. We walk this life together with others. And when we each strive for the goal of building God's kingdom based on love, we all win. We all win. But it is a choice. Life is like a long race. It has its struggles. And it can feel like a constant battle. But we give thanks to God that we don't run this race alone. And when we run with one another, and we all choose, choose to love each other, to love God, and make each day, make each choice for that kingdom of God, then we can celebrate the thrills of victory. Amen. Amen. With that, let us all join together in singing, We Are Climbing Jacob's Ladder.
As we go forth, as we go forth living each day, celebrating the life that God gives us, may we choose each day to live in ways that builds each other up, to build a kingdom that defies what the world or what the naysayers may say about life, about the church, about the world and all God's creation. May we go forth and celebrate the thrills of the victory that God gives us. Amen. Amen.